This episode is brought to you by the Let's Code Physics Patreon supporters. All right, so let's say you've been working with graphs for a little while in vPython and you want to explore some more advanced options for your graphing display needs. Um, there are a lot of options you can play around with on a, a graph with vPython, one of the most significant of which is uh, the fast option. So a couple of versions ago in vPython, they released uh, some additional graphing features if you're willing to let the program take a little bit longer to run. Let me show you what this means. The type of graph we looked at in the previous episode, uh, the graphs default to a fast equals true. So when you press control two to run, you get a very basic graphing window. Um, it displays it very quickly. You get a little trace here that you can use to uh, read off points, but that's about it in terms of the features. There's more features available if you change this to fast equals false. So what I'm gonna do is for the position graph, we're gonna have fast equal false. And for the velocity graph, we're gonna have fast equals true, just so that you can see the difference. Another way of thinking about this is thinking of it in terms of simple. So this is saying that simple equals false. This is saying that simple equals true. So when I press control two to run, I'm gonna get a much fancier graph for my position than I have for my velocity. This is exactly what we saw before, the same types of features. Up here though, we get some more advanced features that we'll be able to look at once the code finishes running. One thing you'll notice now is that the trace is a little bit more uh, advanced because now as I move my cursor along, I'm automatically seeing the value of each curve as I move along in time. So like for example, here at time equal five, I can read off the data values here, I don't have to guess anymore with that trace. Uh, let's see, there's a few other things you can do with this. For example, it gives you a link you can download your plot as a PNG. So it'll grab it as a screenshot, gives you, uh, gives you the file as a PNG that you can save as opposed to having to manually uh, take a PNG. Uh, it allows you some zooming features. You click on here and you can zoom in on a certain region. Well, let's suppose I really want to look at, uh, at these few data points in here. Uh, if, you are, if you need to zoom back out, you can just click on auto scale here. Auto scale means that it will make the entire uh, curve fit inside of the window so you can see all of your data points. You can also zoom in, zoom in and out manually here if you want to. Uh, let's suppose you end up uh, getting this thing moved around a bit, you can reset your axes so that your axes are, are showing the same uh, original range that they were before. You can turn off, uh, let's see, toggle spike lines, what does that do? Oh, okay, cool. <clears throat> this next part, toggle spike lines, as you're moving along with your trace, it will show you uh, where that point goes to on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis, kind of like we sometimes draw in class. So that's pretty neat that you can see that. This next piece turns off the ability to show those, show multiple of those data points. This is just showing the closest one as opposed to multiple of them. Whereas here you are comparing the data back and forth. It's pretty cool. And then finally, you can click on this disk here to edit this in Chart Studio. So this is getting you more advanced options through Plotly. Um, this is beyond the scope of the basic vPython package. So we will go over this uh, in a future video, but this is where you can get a table of your data. Uh, you can play around with all sorts of options in here to further explore your results. So anyway, that's what happens when you turn fast to false. You get all those wonderful options. Again, fast equals true will still get you the data if you just need a graph and just need to be able to get something into your lab report. This is plenty good, uh, but this gives you more exploration options that you can use. What else can you do with these graphing options? One of the most important things you can do is change the scale of the axes. So like for example, you can go from a linear scale to a log scale. Let's try for example, going to our velocity graph, we're gonna turn log y equal to true. Now when you turn a, a, a set of axes into a logarithmic scale, here's what happens. Normally on a linear scale, each tick mark represents an equal space up along that value. 
For a logarithmic scale, it's a bit different. And we actually need to, uh, these are getting all clustered together up there. So let's actually turn, uh, adjust this a little bit. Let's have a y min of, uh, let's say, 1 e negative 4 and a y max of, let's say, 10. Uh, y min and y max are just going to set the range for the vertical axis. Let's press control 2 again. So what happens here in a log scale is each space on the graph represents what we call a different decade. So it represents a different power of 10. So if you go from 10, that's 10 to the 1, down to 10 to the 0 here, that takes up a certain amount of space. Then if you go down to 10 to the minus 1, it takes up the same amount of space, 10 to the minus 2, 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 4. Each one of those powers takes up the same amount of space on the graph. So you're, you're kind of scrunching up the higher numbers and you're spreading out the smaller numbers. What it means is if your graph was originally an exponential like we had before, now it's a straight line. So an exponential becomes a straight line when you turn this into a logarithmic scale. You can do the same thing with x, but let me show you what happens uh, if we do that on this example. Let's turn log x to true and we'll run. And now it's not showing me anything because I've got a data point of zero. You cannot take log of zero, it's equal to negative infinity, which is that negative, not a number code that we have there. So that's causing me a problem there. I could avoid that uh, by not graphing that first data point. Um, it's basically that first one that's causing me a problem. Uh, but generally, if you've got a zero in your data set, you don't wanna make that axis a logarithmic scale. Um, let's see, we've also looked at how we can change the, the, the minimum and maximum values on the axes. Uh, let's try that out with the x's here. So for example, I know I'm going to start at 0, and, I'm no, and I know I'm going to end at a time of 10, so I might as well set x min equals 0 and x max to 10. And now my graph window is no longer auto-scaling on the x-axis. Now it's just adding those data points within here. I suppose I could do the same. I know this is going to have a maximum value of 1, so I could set my y min to 0 and my y max to 1. And now this graphing window won't auto scale anymore. It's just going to add those points within that window. That's a useful feature if you know that your data points are going to stay within a certain range, but if your data points are going to go off to infinity, or if you don't know what range they're going to stay in, you usually want to not specify those so that it will continue to auto scale your window for you. But that's a nice alternative way to get the animation there in the graph. Uh, you can also give your graphs a nice proper title. So you can call this position versus time. And then you'll get a title up above the window. So if you're making this for a report, you can get all of the graphing elements that you need. Get your axes labeled. Get your graph a title up top. Um, if you want to play around with the coloring, you can also change the background to a different color. So let's say you want that to be color.yellow, and you can change the foreground. Let's change that to color. Dot, what's the color we haven't used it? We haven't used green. Deliberately make this jarring so that we notice the differences. All right, so there's your background. Your, your foreground gives you the color for your X, for your grid lines there, which is pretty cool. And finally, if you want to be able to see both these graphs on the same window, you can change their size. So like I can change this to a width of, let's say, 30 and a height of 40. Um, and then let's do the same thing with my velocity graph down here. We'll give it a smaller width and height. Oops, height. Of a series. Oh, I put that in the wrong spot. I put that in the G curve instead of the graph. There we go. Control two. Ah, yes, and those are much too small. Uh, why don't we throw some zeros on the, to the end there? I'm never quite sure what this scale ends up being on the screen. There we go. Those are a little bit crammed together, I think. But, you know, if you needed these to specifically fit in a certain spot, you know, in your paper when you take a screenshot, that's the way you can control their height and width. One last option we'll look at. There is another type of graphing object you can create, and that's called the VGV bars for G vertical bars. 
when we run this, now instead of data points or a line, we're going to end up with a series of vertical bars. So if you're creating a histogram or want to depict a ream on some, something like that, or create a bar chart, um, this is the option for you is this GV bars. So anyway, that's a look at some of the more advanced graphing features here in vPython. Again, this code is available at the link in the description below if you'd like to play around with these options. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.